What's up, y'all? Welcome back in the shop. Hey, we're actually in the shop today. I got the Airstream trailer in here, and uh, we're gonna get ready to do some uh, reinforcements and uh, some rust uh, treatment and grinding and buffing and wire wheeling and possibly sandblasting and all that good stuff. Uh, we got all the plywood ripped off and the trailer pretty much cleaned off down to the bare frame. All the tanks removed and uh, I'll show you what we got going, what metal we're going to be working with, and all that good stuff. So let's get into it here. So here's what we got going. There's a few outriggers I got to patch the bottom portion of. As you can see, that one's pretty rusty. Uh, there's some of this piece of metal here, which supports where the uh, aluminum curves down. Uh, it rivets into that, and as well as the belly pan. A uh, few spots of that. I'll probably cut out that right there and replace it. Uh, there's a couple parts up here. Same deal. Rust down there. That's got to be cut out and replaced. This has got to be cut out and replaced. The step, or uh, I don't know what you want to call it, but it's where the step mounts to. That piece that goes across there, that's got to be replaced. As far as adding metal to it, what I am going to do, which this is probably a little bit overkill, but it's something I guess I feel comfortable with and uh, kind of want to add it to what we have existing here. I'm going to take bed frame, which is inch and a quarter by inch and a quarter high carbon steel angle iron between each one of these outriggers all the way around. I'm going to add bed frame so when the aluminum shell sits on it, it's going to have the uh, plywood. In this case, I'm not going to be using actually wood plywood. I'm going to be using a PVC board, which is, I mean, just what it sounds, it's plastic. Uh, I have three quarter inch uh, black plastic PVC board. Pretty high density stuff, pretty strong, but it probably flexes just a little bit more than regular plywood so uh, that's part of the reason i'm adding some of the structure to it although as it sits i don't think you would need it but uh i do overkill on everything i do so we're gonna add uh angle iron basically a strip of angle iron from here to there and when the shell sits on it everything will be tight i'll put a bolt probably here in the middle one on each end same all the way around. Uh, as far as the center, these uh, beams I have here, which is actually from a steel structure building, uh, leftover scraps that I've picked up, don't even remember where, probably out of some dumpster somewhere uh, years ago. But uh, I have them left. I'm gonna rip one of them down to make a five inch channel, and it'll just be L and five inch, which is gonna be the same height as one of these. And I'm going to add probably two feet apart, maybe 18 inches apart, basically in between every one all the way down, minus the one uh, bay right between the axles because I'm going to build a battery compartment there for my solar batteries uh, and possibly some of the electrical there. But all of the other ones... Well, I guess I shouldn't say all of them. So my water, fresh water tank goes between these two. So that's going to have to be a little bit different. There's not enough room to fit a whole five inch. So minus one for the lithium batteries, two for the fresh water tank, and probably po a portion of that back section for the gray water tank. All the other ones, two between uh, at five inches. Up here... I'm going to be adding a piece of box tubing, a two by two box tubing, and a piece of two by two box tubing this direction, one that direction, basically making like a T. And I think I'm gonna put a spare tire uh, bracket or hanger right in the middle of it where I can mount a spare tire directly under the front of the trailer. I think that'll be a pretty good uh, addition. And I measured it out the, as far as how far the tire will hang down. The clearance will be pretty much equal to the clearance of the axle beam going across. So as far as the 
clearance of the trailer underneath, it'll be pretty much, if you ran a string, it'd be pretty much level from the spare tire. So in other words, it won't hang down any farther than anything else on the trailer already does. So that will work out pretty well on that. Two by two box tubing should be pretty strong, plenty strong enough to hold up not only the portion of the floor here where the seating area will be, but also the spare tire from underneath. So that's pretty much the gist of what we got going here. It sounds pretty complicated. It really isn't, but it is labor intensive as far as adding all this in here. The first thing we're gonna do, I think, is going to rip down one of these beams to five inches and start cutting it in uh, two foot lengths. I think up there I'm gonna do a four foot length and notch the center out. Uh, as you can see, some of these are lower. They're three quarter inch lower. Why they designed it that way, I'm not really sure. They had just like an eight inch strip of plywood on each one. And that would be every four foot, it's that much lower. So we're gonna have to sh uh, basically space it. So it, it's gonna kind of be a little bit tricky how we do this, but uh, it's gonna work out pretty good, I think. And the structure of it will be pretty strong. Oh, and there's one other thing I'm going to do. You can see the channel right here where the gray water tank was previous. And then the part up there that hangs down where the axles go. I'm going to fill basically that gap from the back of this angle right there all the way back to this angle. Turn that five inch beam right there into a eight inch beam. And that will ensure I never have sagging of the rear of the camper, which is kind of a commonly known issue on these. Basically just structurally build that up a little bit. That's pretty much all the modifications we're gonna be doing to it. That's gonna be the quick part compared to treating all the rust and getting everything ground down. But first thing I'm gonna do is rip this beam down and uh, cut it and uh, start welding stuff in here. So let's get into that. We got more or less a full day of work on this, and this is what we've got done. I got spare tire bracket in there. 
with angle iron on each side to uh, keep it from tilting. Uh, what I'm gonna do is weld a threaded rod on that sticks down about six inches and make some type of wing nut. I think that's probably the best way to do it. I may have to put like a locking pin or something so it can't ever come all the way unscrewed when you're going down the road. But that's the plan with that. I got these added in here. Uh, see how I got those welded going through the cross section. They're uh, actually very stout, which uh, just help support the floor a little bit. Not that it ever would really bow down, but like I said, I do everything overkill. Uh, I added some Unistrut uh, three quarter inch in here. Uh, had to go th really thin because that's where the wa uh, fresh water tank goes. And I'll have just enough clearance. Like it, the fresh water tank will barely brush these. I may put like a strip of rubber on each one, but uh, you know, Unistrut, I mean, it's rounded. Both sides are pretty rounded. I don't think it would ever wear into the tank at all. But I may put a strip of rubber just to be uh, sure on that. I got some angle iron added over there. And I'm going to go basically all the way around like that. Just to support the edge of the floor and have a good solid. Uh, basically the floor is going to be sandwiched between that angle iron and the aluminum channel on the uh, shell of it. Just be good and solid that way, I think. I think it'd be a lot better than the aluminum shell just supporting the edge of the floor right there. Uh, next thing I'm going to work on is rebuilding this step. Now, I'm pretty resourceful when it comes to steel. I have a lot of steel around. I just collect it. I have a trailer out back with a whole bunch on it. I mean, I got stuff laying all over the place. Bed frame angle iron. I save all that. I'm always building stuff. A little bit of a fabricator, more like a big fabricator, I guess. Got all kinds of stuff. But anyway, I don't have everything. But luckily, I have a neighbor that collects almost everything scrap metal. And uh, he'll basically give me almost anything. I'll throw him a little money now and again. But I went over there, dug around, and I found this whatever it was from, probably a staircase of some type, industrial staircase, uh, perfect dimension. Uh, I think it's, if I remember right, it's nine. Yeah, nine inches, the old step is eight and a half. Basically perfect. And I'm gonna take, cut a piece of this sheet metal and weld it on the bottom of it so to make the torsion strength really strong. So there's not more stress on one bracket than the other. That's what we're gonna work on next. And I'm definitely not going to record all this. I'll show you when I get a little bit more accomplished, but it'll be, I mean, this is hours and hours. Like there's a, just on what you see here, the metal here, that's a full probably 10 hours worth of work, a day and a half period of time and all that. So it, it's, it'd be crazy to video all that. So I'll um, work on the step, get that knocked out, show you what it looks like when I get done and uh, all the different points of stress I found and different things I beefed up to make it last longer and all that. But uh, being 52 years old, even if I made it just like it was, it'd still last. It'd outlast me anyway. But at uh, any rate, that's what we're going to work on next. And uh, I plan on getting all of the welding and everything done before I start doing the rust removal, just because I know there's going to be welds that need to be surfaced off where the floor is going to sit, things that are going to need cleaned up. And I'll just do it all at once that way and make it easier. So let's get into the step rebuild. Well, here's the new step, basically complete. The only thing it's lacking is a clasp to hold it up. Uh, I'm going to experiment and see what works the best on that before I weld one on or bolt it or rivet it or whatnot. But at uh, any rate, Slides really nice, locks, all that good stuff. Uh, I added, that was kind of dark there, let me see if you can see this one. So I welded a hex nut onto the existing piece, drilled a half inch hole through it, uh, and put a half inch bolt in there, welded it all in. Same on that side. Up here, I uh, did a half inch bolt 
and I had to grind this slot just a little bit wider uh, to match the half inch bolt. Got a washer on, flat washer on each side. Drilled this through half inch. Obviously put it through, welded it in. And the uh, latch is pretty good. This step turned out really nice. It's just galvanized. I'll end up panning it silver probably. But uh, being it as it's a step, it's going to wear through the paint. And I don't have to worry about it rusting. At least not too bad, except for where the welds are. But I will end up painting it silver anyway. But that's pretty nice. I added this high carbon steel angle iron, which before that is what they had up there. And this was the actual latch. They cut it so it was like a spring. And just it just latched right on that. But it was all kind of cheesy and rusted out. Not very good at all. Now we got a good solid step. I think I might get a latch like they use on a toolbox or something like that and just put it underneath here and uh, put a small hook on there. And that way you can just put it up, hook the loop over and just buckle it down. I don't know. We'll see what I'll look and see what my options are and what I think will work the best before I go any further on that. But so uh, definitely a good solid step. Gotta hold some good weight. So yeah, next we gotta work on getting the rest of the support welded on. The extra support, I should say. Just like this all the way back. Man, that's a good looking step. So this is all what we've got done since we finished the step. Got the rest of the angle iron surrounding the outside where the shell's gonna sit. Added the rest of the braces all the way down the center. This bay is still open because I'm still debating, but I think I'm gonna build like a, almost like a chamber that sinks down about 10 inches so I can have a trap door and have all my batteries, lithium batteries under there. We'll see. I haven't decided on that completely yet. Uh, there's where the fresh water tank goes, gray water tank back here. Uh, I got some board, plastic board over there that I'm going to make panels that the tank's going to sit on. Uh, I added one four inch I-beam back here. Uh, and I just have one in the center uh, here because the bed's going to go in the back. I don't think I need double like I did all the way up. Uh, this is where the back of the shell is going to sit and the hinge for the little trunk lid. Uh, just put that in the center for extra support. It's pretty stout. I added a trailer hitch, not necessarily for pulling a trailer per se, although I might try to pull a small trailer at some point and it'll be there if I need it, but more so for maybe like a bike rack or maybe a platform. I think I'm going to build a platform to set like a cooker or something on. We'll see. But, uh, Figured while I'm doing all the welding, go ahead and add it on there. Two inch receivers, pretty handy, so. Are you okay? Did you hit your back? Your face is very dirty. Uh, I had to do some repairs on the strap here. Just made that out of the same uh, steel stud that everything else is made out of. Same over here, had to repair one outrigger due to rust. In the center here, I drilled some breather holes. Just because if you know anything about two flat pieces of metal that are put together like they did here, it's prone to rust in between and I'm just trying to cut the moisture down and keep it a little drier. So I drilled holes, six holes on that side and six holes on this side just to kind of let some air go in there and where they uh, section welded this i'm going to weld a complete bead all the way across to keep the water from the wheel well keep it out of there so that's the plan on that the next thing i got to do is take those three inch angle irons they're going to get welded 
from just in front of the wheel all the way back. That C channel down below there is going to get cut off and uh, that angle iron is going to go completely to the end. That's going to double as a three, uh, three inch lift and rear trailer support because they had a bad uh, deal where they could potentially bend the frame depending on if you overloaded the rear or whatnot. So that'll work good on that. I got new axles coming, should be here in about a week. But uh, after I get those angle irons put on, pretty much everything else is just sandblasting and cleaning the frame, which is gonna take a long time, but it's gonna be monotonous and not much to record on that. So I'll get these welded up, show you what that looks like. All right, I would say we're probably 95% done with all the structural reinforcements. I got these angles, three inch angle irons welded on there. Just did spot welding all the way along both sides. And I have yet to cut these to the proper angle. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do yet back here. I added a little more support there, tying it into the trailer hitch beam. Just a rear structure there, pretty solid. I may even add some more. I think I might go from here to up there and uh, make like, almost like a truss back here. But anyway, 95% of it's done. This definitely has been a long video, but uh, a lot of work. I probably should have split it into two, but you'll have to do that. Uh, I just got word the axles came in today, so gonna have to go get them pretty soon and also sandblasting and paint and all that good stuff that's gonna be in the next video I have a uh, aluminum toolbox I'm building that's gonna go in this cavity for a battery and electrical compartment uh, that's something that's gonna come up in the next video as well uh, I did go ahead and use the original bolts to bolt the angle iron to there and two there because the new axles are going to sit under here they won't interfere with those bolts at all and that way if i ever sold a camper or did anything in the future someone wanted to for whatever reason i don't know why but wanted to lower it back to the original height all they would have to do is take out those four bolts cut some small welding up here small welding back there cut the section out and they could put the axles back to the original height just something i thought of that if it ever, if I ever wanted to do it or anyone else, they wouldn't have to cut a ton of welds and the bolts will hold it just as solid. So uh, I have these pieces here. There's gonna get two welded in here and here, there and there, right where the axle sits, just to kinda, so the angle can't fold at all. Uh, I tied this front end, you can kinda see it over there with a flat plate kind of tie it into the uh, angle line where the water fresh water tank goes and uh, that's pretty much it there's a lot of little details i gotta work out yet but uh generally speaking we got we got a lot of it done and uh, this axe is just currently on here with seat clamps you can see we got one there and one there just so i can roll it around easy but uh, that pretty much sums it up for this video I uh, definitely appreciate you watching, and uh, that was my toddler. He accidentally dropped a grinding wheel into one of the metal cans outside. A little bit startling, but uh, here we're back. And uh, I appreciate you watching all the way through. Uh, stay tuned, and uh, be sure and check out some of the other videos on my channel. I have plenty of other Airstream videos up, and as well as all kinds of other shop life videos. Uh, if you're into this sort of thing, be sure and check them all out. If you appreciate what I did with this video, hit the thumbs up. If you appreciate what I got going all the way through the channel, be sure and subscribe if you're on YouTube, follow if you're on Facebook, and all that good stuff. Thanks. I hope to see you again here soon, and uh, stay creative. Until next time.